Hello, everybody. Adam Parks here with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today, I'm here with my longtime friend, Rebecca Taylor, who is the Vice President of Operations with Equably. How are you doing today? I am fabulous. How are you, Adam? It's another day in paradise. Uh, I'm actually been a little excited about this conversation because I, I think you guys are doing some really interesting things over at Equably. Um, and I'm curious to see how kind of these products and services are coming together for you guys. But just to kind of set the stage and for anybody who has not had the opportunity to meet you at a conference in the past, could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got to the seat that you're in today? Yes, absolutely. Um, So a little bit about me. Uh, I do live in paradise. Uh, I live in San Diego, California. Um, So I'm lucky enough to to have grown up here um, and still be able to to work here as well for Equably. Um, So my uh, career path really started um, when I was working for a legal firm uh, growing up. It was my aunt's law firm. So I have a lot of familiarity in the the legal space. Um, I then moved into a career for a number of years with Target Corporation. So uh, was working in store operations with Target um, and ultimately decided that the retail space wasn't for me. I was uh, growing, uh, started to have kids and a family, so didn't want to work nights and weekends all the time. So um, actually reached out to a prior colleague of mine um, who had uh, started working in the debt collection industry, um, got interested in what she was doing and um, made a move over to uh, Encore Capital Group, where I worked for almost 10 years managing portfolio acquisitions, um, along with some other compliance and operational initiatives. Um, and then just a couple of years ago, about one and a half, almost two years ago now, uh, moved over to Equably, um, and I'm in the role of VP of Operations, as you said, and loving it. So it's been an exciting career path so far. It sure sounds like it. Now, Equably is such an interesting and kind of new organization on the scene. Uh, Can you tell everybody a little bit about what you guys do there? Yes. So um, Equably is the hub for debt collection and recovery. So really what we're doing is creating a curated set of solutions and product offerings for uh, clients. And by clients, I mean anyone that has receivables that are delinquent or defaulted, charged off um, that need, you know, collections assistance. So, you know, we really look at each uh, client from a unique lens and perspective and help that client to optimize the recovery of their portfolios. Um, And again, that's through a number of different technology solutions, analytic solutions, um, and then also uh, master servicing and other service offerings as well. Wow, that's a lot of stuff from one <laughs> organization. And I, you know, I, I, last year I was lucky enough to get to sit in one of your sales meetings with a friend of mine just to be able to listen and learn. And I think it's been really incredible to see this organization come together and refine its craft. Um, equitably for me, when I look at the, you know, knowing you and Cody and, and kind of the, the group over there, you guys have such uh, unique perspectives on how the collection industry can work and how it can improve um, you know, from a creditor's perspective. And so that kind of leads me into my, my line of questioning here for today, which is, you know, when I look at Equably, I see you guys have some really incredible products that are available in the marketplace, the technology, the artificial intelligence engines, you have these really great products, but it looks like you guys have also kind of spun out these services that are ultimately a client of the Equably technology, right? So you're basically taking the technology infrastructure that has been developed for resale and also just applying knowledge to that and providing a full service solution. Am I interpreting that correctly? Yes, you are spot on. Um, so it is a really interesting play. I think it gets uh, myself and my team, you know, personally excited because we're able to really leverage the technology, as you mentioned, be able to show the sophistication, how it truly is able to optimize uh, collections recovery. You're able to use a lot of the automation to save on costs and overhead, and just create lots of sort, you know, lots of efficiencies um, for your team. Mm-hmm. We're able to really test and prove that out by our own use of the technology technology. Um, my team's also then, you know, a direct user. So we're also able to immediately give feedback, uh, help to refine the product, 
Um, and that really helps our you know clients on the front end to you know really have a product that speaks to them, that's easy to use because it's people that are really knowledgeable about this space, building and refining the product. Um, and then same thing for integrated partners that we have on the platform as well. So we have servicing partners, um, data providers, you know, other folks that are interconnected um, downstream in our processes. Um, and I think those folks get that same benefit because we're directly, you know, taking their feedback and making instant updates and upgrades to the platform based on their feedback. Which I think is incredible. I mean, one of the experiences I've had, you know, in the past is with ComplyArm, we would always tell our clients that like, we'll, we'll update whatever or upgrade whatever it is that you'd like on the platform. Um, but we always gave them two options. Option number one is you can pay for it. You could pay for our time. And option number two is you can allow me to deploy this across all of our clients and we can all work together towards a better end result. And I don't think I ever had a client that actually cut the check. I feel like everybody just wanted to participate in kind of the the whole because you don't want to also become separated from those things further down the path, right? That's um, right. So you don't want to lose that opportunity and be like, well, mine's totally custom now and I can't benefit from the collective knowledge. Uh, yeah. You know, do you guys kind of look at things in a, a similar way? Uh, absolutely, right? So we're, you know, we're thinking of ourselves and becoming really this hub for debt collection and recovery in the industry. Um, so if you think of us in that way, that we're a really growing ecosystem, uh, right? Clients on the front end, partners on the back end, various integrations in the middle for optimization. Um, you know, that is the end goal is to be able to optimize not only um, across an individual client's portfolio of, you know, different assets, but also across mm -hmm. that network, across the industry. And so um, that definitely feeds into our philosophy and, you know, our mission to be able to, you know, truly transform the debt collection space in that way. And so, you know, building out that ecosystem more broadly is part of that. So this is just one aspect and element of how we're doing that. I think the application of the technology to the space is, you know, is a long time coming, but, you know, I, I'm starting to feel like the, some of the differentiators with Equably come into the, not like the, the technology knowledge, meaning, um, that engine that's driving everything into its individual buckets. Because when I look at recovery and, you know, I always talk about the four channels, right? Like you can do nothing, you can sue it, you can collect it, or you can sell it. And that's really like the options that I have with a, with a particular portfolio at charge off as a creditor. Um, so I'm interested as how you guys are, are kind of leveraging that machine learning and AI to kind of push um, and to make some of those decisions based on data versus the gut that we've you know developed over our last you know two decades or so in the space, uh, you know, are you so when you guys are, are plugging accounts into the engine, that's helping you to decide next actions, but it's also kind of helping to drive strategy. Yep, absolutely. So we're not only looking at the, you know, underlying information for a, you know, given set of accounts or portfolio, um, but we're also able to mm -hmm. look at historical information. We're also able to look across, um, you know, other um, assets or other data uh, feeds that we have access to, um, to be able to leverage that information and that historical knowledge to be able to optimize uh, a client's portfolio. Um, and if we don't have immediate, um, you know, or prior history, History with that particular asset class or that particular client. So it's really helping them to start at a more elevated state um, to make the best decisions about how their you know, portfolio is being allocated, how it's being treated, what types of strategies should be applied. Um, so starting at that more elevated state and then quickly, again, being able to refine that strategy based on that analytic framework and that machine learning technology that's embedded within the infrastructure of our platform really helps to, you know, increase the, the scale um, and and the ultimate, you know, recoveries that you're able to generate through the, uh, through the platform. So the, so the, the platform itself is, is kind of, a, let's call it the brain power there that's making some of these decisions of pushing them out. But then it sounds like the second piece of that would become the vendor servicing network, right? So you're, you're going to have the law firms and the agencies that are plugged into this. And then some of that decision-making authority is learning from the results that it's seeing from those individual um, organizations in your network and then feeding that back into the engine to make the engine smarter. Talk to me a little bit about what's that, what's that uh, uh, environment like for a vendor, right? So for the agencies and the law firms that are interacting 
um, or, or providing services through the platform, you know, what kind of benefits are they seeing through leveraging this kind of technology? So uh, I think there's a number of, uh, of benefits and we're very happy with all of our um, you know, vendor partners that we've been working with. They've been great as we've been standing up and growing the business. Um, so as we continue to bring new clients, new portfolios, um, I think there's a lot of excitement there. Um, and part of the reason is we're, we're helping to bring those portfolios to uh, different servicing providers, um, maybe you know, in a faster, um, more streamlined way than if they were to directly um, mm-hmm. you know, connect and integrate with a given client. So we're not only helping to streamline that onboarding process, um, we are helping to make sure that it is extra efficient. We are basically a sales channel um, in a way for our our partners. And I think the partners also are getting the benefit of our expertise and our learnings because we are wanting to make those partners better and help them improve their results because if they're improving results on the platform, that in turn provides better results for our clients upstream. And so, you know, they've been very open to that feedback and the, you know, analytical, um, you know, reporting and details we're able to share with them about how the portfolios are being managed, where we see optimization Mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, And frankly, where, you know, they may see opportunities for us to change strategies. It's really a two-way street in conversation um, so that we're able to make sure we're max- maximizing MPVs for um, you know, the, the client or the predator, um, but also making sure right the right inventory is placed to the right location, that there are good profit margins mm-hmm. and, and things like that to make this you know, holistic ecosystem that I talked about earlier um, really worthwhile and that it's mutually beneficial for our, all parties involved. Well, it sure sounds like that, which is, I'm sure, why you call yourselves the hub, right? Like, because everything's kind of plugging into uh, what you guys are doing there. So the engine is is driving decision making, and then the vendors are going to have these options. So I know that you also have some like some digital communications tool sets um, that you've you've developed through the EQ Engage. Um, you know, how are are is that something that's being managed by Equably in that digital communication channel, or is that something that the vendor partners are leveraging? How does that kind of fit into the equation? Yeah, so that's uh, something that we are rolling out here soon. Um, so it's EQ Insights, and that's really the um, you know first party white label digital communication solution, so that clients um, or partners are able to leverage our platform for um, the creation of those uh, different uh, digital communications, um, for uh, the actual execution of those. Again, it's integrated with our um, EQ Engine uh, analytics platform, so you're able to drive great insights to be able to optimize how you're leveraging those different strategies. Um, So it's something that we're very, very excited about. And again, um, going back to the ecosystem concept, you know, that product offering is available, again, not just for clients on our platform, but also for partners to be able to leverage to optimize those solutions. We know there are a lot of folks out there that may not have these capabilities today. Um, and even to be able to build them on their own, it may take them a while to actually get to a fully optimized and efficient state. Um, and so, you know, by rolling out our uh, our own version of that with EQ Insights, you know, we're fast tracking, you know, agencies or um, other um you know, other network uh, providers with the ability to kind of fast track um, those solutions and strategies for not just Equably clients, but others that they may be servicing as well. So you guys, so you guys have built the, let's call it the tracks by which to deliver these communication messages and organizations, call it agencies or creditors, can either use your train tracks and build their own train to run down it, or they can take the first class service um, you know, with a conductor and a butler to take them down those same tracks and, and actually get the insights of the individuals um, involved in Equably from that perspective. Is that yep. kind of makes sense? Yep, absolutely. Yep. So my team uh, is there to be able to, you know, handhold um, and make sure that all of those processes are set up. You know, we're getting into um, the nitty gritty details of what communications look like and what the right strategies are for um, individual segments of consumers, you know, doing that analytics to understand the portfolio so that when those strategies, again, are stood up for the first time that, you know, they, they are truly optimized. Um, and so folks are able to leverage our expertise to be able to manage that part of their uh, collection strategy, um, or we can put those tools in their hands and they're able to set up those strategies and monitor and manage them, you know, directly. So um, lots of optionality there, depending on the needs of the particular client. Well, I think it goes back to the, you know, right at the core here where you can either provide them with the tools to do it or the full, you know, the full breadth of service to just have it done for you. 
um, which I, I think is an interesting approach. And in, in again, being your own client, right? So by providing those services for others in a, a white glove type of operation, you're basically leveraging that same infrastructure to provide the direct service versus kind of uh, providing a product or, or a SaaS solution, which I think is very interesting. So just the last piece that I wanted to kind of dig into was I know you guys are doing a lot from a document management standpoint as well. And what a massive complicated beast to manage in the receivables management industry, all of the account media documentation and all of the litigation documentation. I'm actually having little heart palpitations just thinking (laughs) about the old school days when a moving truck would pull up to an office and start unloading boxes of paper. How are you guys addressing that, you know, massive lift from a master servicing perspective? Yes, uh, I'm glad you asked. Um, So obviously documentation uh, is very important, um, as you mentioned. So we've really paid a lot of attention to how is that documentation ingested automatically into EQ Collect? How is it seamlessly appended to the different uh, accounts in the platform? How do we validate that all of the necessary documentation is available for collections, depending again on the strategy? Um, How do we then push and make sure that documentation is available to servicing partners um, or potentially to debt buyers if accounts are being sold? Um, and then how do we you know, facilitate the request process if there's um, you know, a complaint, a dispute, or some need for additional documentation, really streamlining uh, the request process and the fulfillment processes for that type of documentation. And so again, you know, having uh, the master servicing element where my team is overseeing and has tons of experience in this space, um, you know, we really understand what the logistics are, what the requirements are, and so we're able to, you know, fast track and streamline uh, the technology build, which is EQ Docs, to be able to provide that document management solution as a a standalone product offering to our clients um, who may need that capability. Uh, Again, not only for the collections and recovery portion of their business, but also from the time of account origination, right? So oftentimes we'll talk with a client and um, they're like, yeah, I need document management capabilities. Happy to have you connect in with the accounts that you're servicing. Um, But when we get in there, we kind of understand kind of the current document management isn't um, isn't great, right? And it's difficult to, you know, stay on top of and keep managed and organized. And so really our solution is meant to be from the time of origination all the way through the full life cycle uh, of those accounts. How do you appropriately manage and retain that documentation um, so that you've got, got your arms around that from a compliance perspective? Well, it sounds like you guys have been incredibly busy over the last year and a half (laughs) putting together and kind of rethinking or reimagining a lot of the different processes that organizations have struggled with across the receivables management industry um, and things that creditors have not perfected. And you guys are using all of your existing knowledge to, to kind of hone that craft. So I'm very excited to see what the next 12 months are going to bring for you in the equity team. For those of you that are watching, if you have additional questions that you'd like to ask Rebecca or myself, you can leave those in the comments on LinkedIn or YouTube, and we'll be responding to questions there. If you have additional topics that you'd like to see us cover, you can leave those in the comments below as well. And I'm hoping I can convince Rebecca to come back and help me continue to create great content for a great industry. Rebecca, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you coming on and spending a few minutes talking with me about this delicate balance of being your own client. Absolutely. You're welcome. Hope everyone enjoyed. Please reach out if you have any questions about any of the products and services. Um, Again, think of Equably as the debt management hub and extension of your business. Um, And we're here to optimize and bring, you know, true value back to you and your consumers. So thanks again for Adam, Adam, for having me. Absolutely. For those of you that are watching, we will have Equibly's contact information, Rebecca's as well, in the details so that you can reach out to her and ask questions directly as well. But until next time, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'll talk to you again soon.